Okay, we're back here on whatever we're back on. Michael, should Republicans in down ticket races embrace Trump or run away from him? It, mm -hmm. What they're going to do is they're going to assess uh, likely to not be as close as they want or would be otherwise because of the baggage that he's bringing on, on immigration and a whole bunch of other issues. So, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of down ballot candidates and you're already beginning to see that say, you know what, I'm, I don't need to go to the convention. I don't need to uh, have you come into the district. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out. Paul Begala, should Hillary use Bill Moore <laughs> as the campaign heats up, or is he too much of a liability? No, he's a, he's a total asset. And I think you'll see him a lot, particularly in those Rust Belt states where, where Trump is, is, is strong. His appeal, especially with, like, white working class guys, it's at the heart of the Trump, they all voted for Bill Clinton 20 years ago. He can get a lot of them, at least talk to them, and try to get them off of their crazy. Uh, I, I want to see him out there a lot. Yeah, but does Hillary? How, how, sure. How is his health? I have to say, I'm concerned. He doesn't look good. Well, yeah, he, well, it's now years since he had the heart surgery, but he's doing, he's doing great. He, he, he needs to goes... eat a cheeseburger once yeah. in a while. <laughs> he's he healthy and thin now. Everybody other... mocked him when he was eating at McDonald's, and now they're mocking him because he only eats, you know, bean burritos. Right, because there's a, there's a happy medium. He's doing great. <laughs> okay. By the way, you should I, I see hope his so. schedule. He's off to, you know, he's always off to, to Africa, especially where his foundation is saving millions of lives. I mean, he travels all the time. He just works his butt off. Okay, Shu, and I'm just going to call you Shu. Is that what, do people... So, well, I'll take what I can get, but... <laughs> do people call you that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no? But it seems like it's a short for Shu's a cat. You'll get that one day, bro. It's okay. <laughs> If you saw how it was spelled, you'd feel sorry it's, for it's me. Not, it's not helpful, the spelling at all. X-I-U-H-T-E-Z-C-A-T-L. Yeah, you, good luck with that. Uh, I think shoe's a good name. What can one person do to influence global climate policy? I'd like to think that there's more than one person that cares about influencing global climate policy, so I say get involved with people around you, make a difference. It's, it's about one of the greatest issues of our time, you know? So one person can get involved and connect with other people in their community to make a difference, get involved with politics, get involved with business, get involved with science, whatever it is that you're passionate about, get engaged with that to make a difference. That's, that's what I gotta say. Yeah. I, man, how do we... I think a better question is, how do we clone more kids like you? <laughs> well, I think the good thing is that we don't have to, because I, at least in my personal experience, I've met millions of young people all over the world. Well, that might be an exaggeration. I met a lot of young people all over the world <laughs> that are already thinking the way that, you know, I've been thinking my entire life and are ready for change. They're ready for change. I mean, our voices are, have been systemically disempowered since the day that we're born. We're not going to make a difference until you graduate college and you get a career. Then you'll contribute to society. But the way that I see it is we're one of the most powerful forces on the planet right now. But and we you, gotta use that. You, yeah. But you just... No one would think this guy was 16, yeah. right? If you didn't know... Can I ask him a question? Like, remember when LeBron was first in the NBA? Yeah, right. He was, like, he was like, this guy's 32. He's, 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 he's <laughs> kidding. He didn't just Damn come out of high school. <laughs> but, but how, how are you dealing with the system? I mean, your passion and your energy is contagious. Mm. How is it being received by the system itself? I mean, whether it's, whether it's at the local level, yeah. the state level, the governments that you, that are gonna be making the policy. Exactly, so I mean, working with the system because obviously if I just like stood in the street with a sign and a bullhorn, like where am I gonna get? You know, that's part of it, but at the same time, that's why I'm in a federal lawsuit holding our federal government accountable for violating our constitutional right to a healthy atmosphere. I'm working with the system on a legal level. I'm working on the system with the political level. I've been a voice for my generation at the United Nations. I'm on Bill Maher. Like, there's all these crazy things that are happening mm -hmm. yeah. getting me on, in the mainstream, you know? Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I yeah. You, you talked to Bill, with Bill earlier about music, art, and culture and how that reaches your generation. Who's doing that right in your generation? Who's reaching your, your age cohort through music, art, and culture Ooh. to make them care about exactly. the fact that the planet, planet is on fire. Well, personally, I know a lot of artists that I listen to personally that are already on the right track. You know, my homie Rory's in the audience, my friend Mustafa, they're in the audience and they're here, and they're artists that are already thinking, how can we use this passion that we have, yeah. these talents that we have? How can we get Kanye to know well, about this? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think there's a lot of other people we can focus on that aren't Kanye. They are more likely, you know? Uh, there it is. 
I love the crowd turning on guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh, liberal. They are the hysterical. <laughs> He's right. The shout out to Rory. I had him on my show. He's amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. He's awesome, man. But, but Kanye would be a tough one to turn around because he's very into materialism. Yeah. The bling is right. very important. Well, I mean, how I mean, do we make bling part sustainable? Of, big part of rap culture. Yeah, That you sure. gotta, you know, it's hard to rap about not having. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> rap about heat. <laughs> Warm weather. Well, Larry, as someone with experience in sitcoms, late night, and sketch TV shows, which format offers the best opportunity for social criticism? Well, late night television for direct social criticism. It's harder to do it in sitcoms. Um, all in the Family, it was... Well, Blackish, pretty, pretty... Blackish, blackish we is, have done it. Yeah. But that was the show I was involved with also. Right. And from the beginning, we wanted that show to be a show about a black family, where the Cosby show... <laughs> it's hard to mention a Cosby without going there. <laughs> Why? But, what happened? No, the Cosby show... <laughs> no. the Cosby so what sh do you refer to? No, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> I didn't think so. But the Cosby show was a show about a family that happened to be black, where Blackish was like, no, motherfuckers, we're black. Right. You know? <laughs> and, there, and that was the big difference, you know? So it was right. taking on race without apology. You know, and, and creating stories that are universal family stories without apology. But it's harder to do that in sitcoms. I think the late night format is the most direct way to do satire in them. Okay, does Bernie saying he will vote for Hillary, uh, that was news yesterday, have an impact on the Bernie voters who have yet to get behind uh, the presumptive Democratic nominee? And it was a bit of a mixed message Bernie uh, yes. gave. I, I yes. couldn't it's quite probably. figure it out. He, he's staying in the race, but he's voting for not him. He said this morning he's, he's, <laughs> he said this morning he's still running for president, but he will not be voting for himself for president. So that, I imagine the Bernie one, bros right? are a little baffled. Yeah. Um, I would find that perplexing. Uh, at this point, like, I just feel like people are kind of over the Bernie thing a little bit, maybe. Uh, we know Clinton's gonna be the nominee. It's kind of done. I'm not sure. I mean, there's just so much the media attention has shifted completely away from his campaign. So instead of I feeling think. the Bernie, you want you to sense the burn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vibe the Imagine burn. Imagine the burn. Totally. Yeah. Imagine the burn. I'm very optimistic about this. But we saw this with Hillary and Barack. The most important thing is when it looked like Senator Obama was gonna win, he pulled back and he told his team that. Let's stop attacking her. Let's give her the time and space to finish her race. If you watch, that's what Hillary did with Bernie, too. It's a sign of respect. But now they're going to have to come together. Yeah. And, and they will. They really will. And as I said earlier, his voters have a smaller percentage of his voters today say they'll never be for Hillary than Hillary's voters said about Barack. The challenge will be to motivate them. She got crushed with young people by Bernie. She's got to find a way to motivate them. She's got to get your slightly older big brothers and sisters out. Yeah. And he will be central to that. That's why her team is giving him That's all this time and space. Well, and like, even, though if he, if he, even though he didn't become our president, like, he stirred things up. You know, yep. he, he really stirred things up, especially Absolutely. among the younger generation. And right. yes. we'll never be able to forget right. that. And we no, have to no. respect that. But the yeah. question yeah. is, can Hillary capture that kind of energy and sustain yeah. it? And that's, that's something I just don't think she can, because I don't think it's in her nature to be in that space that Bernie is. She, I mean, there's all this conversation running around. I completely I'm a disagree with that. I think, think so? A, I think it's a race between alien versus predator. I think, <laughs> I really do. I, and Hillary, that, that political machine, the Clintons, is a killing political machine. It, it is. Kill anything that's bad. He, Hillary, he knows better than No, Hillary, yeah, <laughs> Hillary Clinton <laughs> should not be underestimated. She's smart, she's competent, she knows exactly what she's doing. She'll, she'll be true. there. But, but, but she, like Donald Trump, creates her own drag as well. And, and so the question going into the campaign when it begins in August well, uh, is how much drag does she create uh, given all those variables well, with the youth vote? And, she, and it won't be she, seen her drag, I mean, I'm, I'm not taking away from anything that you just said, but I'm just, I'm just that's part no, of the But her drag is all right. old drag. Yeah. It's exactly. all stuff that's... Trump creates new drag every day. Exactly. I think, the, I think part of the problem for Hillary is that all of her strengths are not things that translate into getting tons of, you know, 18 and a half year olds to show up at rallies. Mm -hmm. Like, Hillary is really good at having a wonky, detailed conversation about right, how right, to fix right. the opioid epidemic, right. but like nobody's gonna be like, hooray, gradual change as far as the student loan crisis. I can't wait yeah. for the tax code yeah. to be slightly tweaked. Yes, like, right. no, I mean, people don't right. stand in line for hours for that right. stuff. So, but, but she has a secret weapon, Donald J. Trump. He's gonna be right. the greatest turnout machine the Democrats have ever had. And, and they she say also the same has President Obama, and she also has her husband. Right. She's gonna but have a running mate be, soon. Right. But she will be too. 
And so the, right. don't underestimate that either. Yes, but yeah. see, his voters, Donald Trump's voters, this is all they do is, like, bitch about their prostate and vote. They're the, very loyal yeah, voters. Yeah, okay? that's true. My that's, people, that's, they're hard to turn out. We yeah. need motivators. Well, that's, that's we right. need that's, work. That's we need true. organization. Or, or else it's going to be Brexit, too. Yes. That's right. Yes. But that's why charismatic candidates work for Democrats more, because... Uh, right. They need to fall in love with people. They need to fall oh, in love. the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. Hope right. and change. Thank you. Right. Yeah, we don't need yeah. to love you. We just need you there. So yeah. we just That's one of Bill Clinton's laws. He always said, uh, uh, Democrats want to fall in love. Republicans mm. just want to fall in line. Right. right. And That's they it. have fallen in so line. We just need you there. Right. Right. They who, do you, who do you think or hope would be her Veep pick? If you, I, if you could, like, have you, it's any not ideal about, person. Well, see, the problem is I think about the election. And it's a governing issue. The vice president has never really mattered. Even Sarah Palin didn't tank McCain. Even Dan Quayle didn't tank George H.W. Bush. Even Lloyd Benson couldn't save Mike Dukakis. It's, in my lifetime, I'm 55, I know that makes me ancient, but in my <laughs> lifetime, it's never been outcome determinative. So you should actually pick somebody who, God forbid you die, could actually run the country. 21% of our presidents got there because the president died or resigned. So you've got to think about it that way. You can't just be, oh, who helped me carry, right. you know, Kentucky. Right. You know, it, 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 that's what, I know her, I know her 25 years. She's sitting there saying, God forbid I die, who could take over? God willing I live, who could be a governing partner? the way I think Biden has been wonderfully for President Obama. Right. And you now, that's how you have to do this. And who cannot suck all the oxygen out of the room, out of the room. <laughs> like Elizabeth and Warren. And that's why Elizabeth right. Warren won't be on the ticket. I don't think that's, I don't think that's I consideration right. about that. Right. But Biden's very... <laughs> well, that's why on. she won't be the no. vice can president. I, can, I, can I do a Nobody wants to be the bride and have the bridesmaids deal all... Correct. Right. You know. yeah, it's just a hamper. That's why they right. dress the bridesmaids in shitty colors. Also, if we're talking about Elizabeth Warren, so last week you were criticizing Republican and Senate leaders for running into the elevators, you know, the morning sure. after Trump says something stupid. Elizabeth Warren does that every day on Capitol. Is that right? Yeah. Like, if you're a reporter and you're staking out votes and you want to ask her, yeah, how are you voting? That. What's an important issue to you? I mean, it's like she sprints. There's a staffer behind her. She automatically gets a phone call. Like, oh, man, how convenient. You get a phone call whenever a reporter walks up to you. And, like, I understand that Hill reporters are a little socially awkward and <laughs> don't always have the best personal hygiene. But we're not, we're not terrible. And, uh, and just seeing the fact that she just totally stiff arms reporters and only wants to talk to them in like a TV setting, I find really troubling. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if I had anything to say about Hillary's Veep pick, I hope she picks somebody who doesn't treat journalists, you know, well, like they have like not, airborne Z. Hillary has not had a press conference. <laughs> since yeah, no kidding. In, but November? I don't, you know what? I can't blame her. Because if I she think. does, it would just be bullshit, stupid questions. Yeah, but like, but all these guys From the bullshit reporters. media. But all these guys talk to reporters. Corker talks yeah. to them. Tim Kaine talks to them. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cruz will talk to you for like half an hour. Of course. Which is um, but every question is not going to be about <laughs> emails and yeah, ben, Benghazi and, yeah. you know, I don't... Well, I mean, okay. suck it up, you know? It's not that bad. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>